Okay, let's now look at a simple example using the backpropagation algorithm and using the formulas that we've seen before. And then we'll apply it or we'll use it on a simple um, case, which is for the XOR function. We saw that we cannot or we could not solve it using a single layer perceptron network. So now we're going to use a, a, a multi-layer perceptron. And uh, to remind you, uh, the XOR function is, uh, this is the input pattern, X1, X2. And it is one when uh, the two inputs are different. When they are the same, the output is zero. When they're different, the output is one. And this is the output function here. So our training pattern, so we're going to train again. So we feed the first uh, input pattern, zero, zero. And then our target uh, output would be zero. And then we feed the second pattern, zero, one. Our target is supposed to be one. And in any error is used to back propagate it to adjust the weights. And then we do it with the one epoch. And then when we finish, we do it with a second epoch until we reach convergence. So, so this is the architecture of the multi-layer perceptron used for, to solve the XOR function. So we have our input pattern X1 and X2. This is a hidden layer with two nodes and we have just one single output node because our output is just, as we saw, one value. And these are the corresponding weights. So to remind you, the second subscript corresponds to the node number, so V01. The second one here is for the node number one and V are for the hidden uh, nodes. The W's are for the output nodes. So W01 is for the first node, but then we, in this case, we just have one node. So initially we, random, we randomly assign small weight values to the multi-layer perceptron, just like in this case here. Where you can see that the weights are negative and positive, but very small values. So the first pass, so again, this is using these weights. We, and this activation function, this is our activation function. This is the, uh, to, to sum up the product of the input, um, input uh, values to, with, the, with the weights to get the activation and we feed it to the activation function, which is this one here, which is a sigmoid, and then to get the output for that node. So we start with the first training case where we have the pair, the input pattern zero, zero, and the target or desired output is supposed to be zero here. Now we feed this input zero, zero to our network. Of course, here we always have one, one, and then we compute the activation for this node. So the z in is 0 0.3 multiplied by one plus 0 0.21 multiplied by zero plus 0 0.15 multiplied by zero. We get 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3. We feed it to this activation function, just like uh, just as shown in the diagram to get the value z1 equal 0 0.43. We do the same thing here, 0 0.25 by, by one minus 0 0.4 by zero and 0 0.1 by one. We get the net activation. We feed it to the um, sigmoid to get the second output or the output of the second node of the hidden layer. Remember these values, 0 0.43 and 0 0.56, because we're going to need them later when we uh, co compute or update our weights. We do the same thing for the output node. So we feed these values, the Z1 and Z2, to the output node. We get the activation, net activation for this node, which is 0 0.43 by one, minus 0 0.2 by 0 0.43, plus 0 
multiplied by 0 0.56. This is the net output, the net activation. We feed it again to the sigma end. And then we get this output here, 0 0.42, which is the actual output. But then that's not zero because uh, we, we wanted to have our target output is supposed to be zero. So there is an error here that we're going to use to back propagate and adjust the weights of the neurons according to the back propagation or using the formulas of the back propagation algorithm. So the first thing is we're going to use this delta function, which is the target output, the target output minus the actual output multiplied by the derivative of the uh, sigmoid or the activation function for this value here, for the yn, for the net activation. But then remember that remember that uh, uh, the derivative of the sigmoid is given by the sigmoid itself multiplied by one minus the sigmoid. But for this net activation at the output, uh, at the output. So if we use this formula here, the target was supposed to be zero, but we got 0 0.42 times 0 0.42 multiplied by one minus 0 0.42. And we get this value here, minus 0 0.12, that we're going to use and back propagate to the, old, uh, uh, to, the, to the hidden nodes. So the delta in one is going to be this delta multiplied by W11, which is zero minus 0 0.2. Um, And the delta is the delta in this, this activation multiplied by the derivative of the, of the sigmoid. So it is uh, 0 0.02 multiplied again by 0 0.40, 0 0.43, which is the value that we got Z in one. Remember I, I told you, remember that value and then multiply by one minus 0 0.43. We get 0 0.005. If we do the same thing for the second node, so the delta one is minus 0 0.12 multiplied by 0 0.3, which is this value here. Now for the delta two, remember I told you, remember 0 0.56. So we get this value minus 0 0.3. 0, 03 multiplied because of this property of the, the derivative of the sigmoid is given by this formula here is 0 0.56 times 1 minus 0 0.56. We get this value. Now we calculate the weights using the formulas given in the in the algorithm. So this is the uh, um, the the weight or the learning weight at uh, the learning rule for the output node, the Ws. So this is how we change our Ws, Wj1 for this node here, because we just have one. And then the W0 for this one. And the J is one and two. So W11, which is this one, and W21, which is this one here. So these are this is the formula that we use to adjust our weights. So delta W0 is minus 0 0.102 because the alpha we assume that it is equal to one, the learning rate. The delta W11 is the delta one, which we found before minus 0 0.12 multiplied by the 0 0.43. Remember that value here that we said, I told you remember that value. And the same thing for the 0 0.56. This is the, 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 the way we adjust uh, the weights for, the, for, this, for this node here, for this connection. And then the, this is the formula to adjust the weights here, these weights, uh, delta Vij 
where J is one and two, and then the I, um, yeah, the I is, uh, we're going to see now, and the delta V zero is, this is the formula to adjust the, the bias for the node J. So this is the delta V zero minus 0 0.05, Delta V2 is minus 0 0.07. And we just apply the formulas with X1 equals zero, because remember this is the value that we had before at the input. So Delta one X, uh, X1 and Delta one is equal to 0 0.05. And then the second, second Delta V2 again for X1 equals zero and the same thing for the other uh, weights. We, after the, after the first pass, so this is going to be our, so this is, this, these are the values for our delta, the, 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 the way we need, we're supposed to adjust the weights. And remember these were the old weights, the initial weights. So the new weights would be the old weights plus uh, delta V zero one, for example. And then the old weight and, and this weight would become the old weight plus delta V one one, which is in this case the same. So 0 0.21. So, so if we apply these formulas, these, this is the values of the weights after the first pass. Remember initially we set them to random numbers. Now this is the output for the first pass. If we do it after a number of epochs and 500 iteration in this case, these are the values that we get for the, uh, for, for, for the multi-layer perceptron. Now I have another example where I uh, use the vectorial uh, and uh, matrix uh, notation, but I'm going to skip this one. Uh, so looking at some applications of the back propagation. So the first one is function approximation. So you can use the multi-layer perceptron to approximate any continuous function using a two-layer network with squashing activation functions. And actually there is a theorem, which is called the Kolmogorov theorem, which says that activation, if activation functions can vary with the function, it can be shown that an input, an N input and an M output will require at most two N plus one hidden units. So we can find the number of uh, nodes in the hidden unit. This is, you can find this demonstration or the proof for this theorem in uh, the textbook faucet. Uh, now you can do the whole thing using meta learning uh, where you can um, optimize or find the parameters of your network. So you can find even actually uh, for any problem you can find your uh, uh, number of hidden layers and number of uh, nodes per layer. This is just to show you what it means by the approximation of, of a uh, of a function h of x, which is this function here. And we approximate it using staircase, uh, a staircase function h of x. So, so at this value, just like when you do the, when you do the sampling at this step, so zero, uh, zero, uh, zero order uh, sampling. So at this point, you, this is the value and then you keep it here and then and then for this value here, this is the um, this is the approximation for uh, 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 H2, and the same thing for X3. This is the approximation for X, H3, and you approximate your function uh, lowercase hx with this um, with this uh, um, with this um, with this uh, function here with this approximate function. And of course, the more samples you have, the more uh, X1, X2, and so on you have, the more you can have a finer, so this, uh, this delta X will become smaller. So there is actually a number of um, 
references. This is a very old one where they give you a, a problem to be solved and it can vary from um, acoustics to uh, um, vision to a number of other applications. And they show you the architecture they've used to solve it and the results they got. Thank you.